Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I am of the stars. And I wanted to talk today just a tiny bit about um, groups and the karma of groups and the issue of leaders of groups and how that their karma affects the group karma. And so I think uh, we could retroactively we can tell from the way that a group is say that the leader is either could be deceased or still the first the, like the founder could be deceased or still alive but we can tell from the way that a group is and like like the micro sphere of the group the way that they think in their conscious and subconscious minds um we can tell how the leader is you know and so um and the reason for that is this uh, the leader of group, a group has a kind of uh, deeply unconsciously known power over the members of a group. And in fact, I can hear Sato Voce on the deep unconscious plane, I can hear leaders who are alive uh, dictating the play of reality, the karmic play of all the members of the group. So. And for instance, they will say, and now so-and-so will will respond to this, and this story that's going on, right, will be developed, and then the person will speak, and the things that they will say, and the way that they say it, the energy signature, the way that they say it has to do with the energy signature of the group. And this will go on if I sub into a group for a minute or two during the day. This will go on for hour after hour as astral stories are created through the directorship of the leader of a group. Okay? So, um, so, Groups in the world today have ceded their power to co-create reality to the leader of the group. It's the agreement that a person makes when they join a group. Okay, and, and so, first thing to know is that the people in the group who are not the leader cannot co-create reality. They cannot. They have given that power to the leader of the group. It is the leader of the group who creates the reality for everyone in the group. Okay? Um, now, what happens with the energy signature of each person in the group is that the very small flaws... First, people usually join groups because they look up to leaders. Okay? So the leaders have many fine qualities. The... The thing that's concerning is the very small burnt seeds of karma that, the, that initiate samskaras, those extremely minute energy threads that exist within the leaders which flow out through the directorship of the play of karma, flow out to all the members of the group, attach to similar soul wounding in the group. and create a stream of soul wounding or actually many different streams of soul wounding depending on the energy signature of the of the leader and this is the shadow side of of grouping so i'll give you an example of this um suppose that a leader sometime in their life had done something a little bit dishonest like um, filch a little money in grade school, okay? This creates a karmic seed that, that very small karmic seed that grows through, through um, the energy flowing of the teacher flowing out through the group, attaches to every instance of, of filching or stealing or whatever that happened in the group. And there may be one person in the group who's a regular filch, okay, who does that for a livelihood, a con artist, okay. So that one person who might be a discreet con artist before they join the group becomes, because of the flow of that energy, that great flow of energy through the group, becomes an, uh, a, a con artist who takes too many chances and gets caught by the law. That's one example. Here's another example. Suppose a leader had a terrible experience in their childhood. Suppose that at a time when 
their desire elemental was first active, say the age of about four or five. <coughs> they were followed around by their little sister, and they were bothered by that because of this unaccustomed energy that was coming up for them. And they turned around and threw a stone at her and, all by mistake, killed her. Okay. Now, this is a terrible, tragic childhood accident. That's really all it is. It's a mistake that, that was made in childhood. It's a terrible tragedy. But what happens when, when that person becomes the leader of a group? Suppose there is a person in the group who has killed a time or two, and not just in childhood, but for personal gain. Okay, The energy of the leader, which is basically innocent, flows through all the people in the group, hits that and gains momentum and hits that person who has a larger samskara regarding the same thing, okay? And that person goes out and begins killing people. Now, typically in the old days that wouldn't necessarily happen, but today, because of the incoming light, it does happen. And that is why um, my peer group is saying it's best not to group right now. They have a really practical reason for it. <coughs> not grouping pre prevents glomming, and, and when we don't glom, we can clear more easily without all that like cognitive dissonance and racket in the soul field, you know, when the light comes in as it is right now. Um, so, I was going to give you another example. Uh, okay, suppose suppose a leader, uh, he, now it doesn't matter if the leader is, is, is alive or dead actually, because the energy of the leader somehow, I don't know how, but somehow remains with the group. It, some people call it group karma. Um, so, if a leader had had, for instance, a a desire for money for the group, and if synchronously with that desire, someone in the group who had money had passed on, then then um, there would exist within the group a um, a, a tiny samskara with regard to with regard to uh, killing people so that they could get money for the group. Okay, and if the need arose in the group at some future date for money, then that that uh, energy might play out through through a glom effect on all the members of the group. Okay, and uh, that's so that's a a more strident example there. Um, let's see, if a leader had a tendency towards a particular alternative lifestyle. He, the likelihood is that there would be within the group um, the expression of that alternative lifestyle within the group in, in, in generations to come. Um, these things can change, but it takes like a conscious, <laughs> it's my cat, it takes a conscious effort from the, by the group to change the, like, the direction of the energy of the group and the soul signature of the group. Just like right now the Catholic Church has done a big upgrade of its of itself. And I think the CIA went through one too, like a, a revision that's to purify the soul signature of the group. And in fact, I think that's, that's, <laughs> that's a thing that's happening these days is that, is that groups are beginning to purify their soul signatures. Yeah, which is a wonderful idea. Now, I thought I'd give you another example uh, from, from Jesus Christ and the Christian churches. Oh, Lucy, what's wrong? Um, <clears throat> you know, Jesus Christ was a wonderful teacher. He was really a great teacher, and, and, and uh, the stuff that he came out with in the Gospels is just, uh, you know, there's a, like a gold mine of information for everybody on earth today. Now, one or two things that happened in his life are, are pretty unfortunate, and I'll just go into one. That is his crucifixion. People have put a pretty positive spin on the crucifixion by saying that by being crucified, Christ raised up the whole world and, and saved the world from sin. Okay, But I don't, I, I don't really think that's true myself. 
I think that he was caught in a time when the, the incoming light was insufficient to prevent that from happening. And, and that in our times, in these times, there is no need for that kind of self-sacrifice. So, so I don't hold by the notion that it, would, that it was necessary for Christ to be crucified. Now, I realize this is not a mainstream notion, but, but I, you know, my feeling about self-sacrifice is that it's an overlooking of the, of the importance of being kind and sweet to our own hearts. And it's an, and it's an, uh, it, and so what we need to do is, is not be self-sacrificing to the point where our own hearts are injured, you know. Now, on the other hand, since Christ couldn't escape what happened to him, that he, the fact that he could hold his heart open despite all that and forgive everyone despite all that was an excellent example for humanity when faced with trials and tribulations and sorrows of life, okay? So that was a good thing. So this is just one example of an un unfortunate energy that influenced his group after his passing on because there was a lot of self-sacrifice and martyrdom in Christianity. And I don't feel that this was a, a good direction, although there were many good energies, it have been many good energies in Christianity. One other thing in the Christian faith that it seems to me uh, uh, has happened because of the times that Christ lived in is the uh, is the downplaying of the respect for women. Now, Christ did a pretty good job, I think, of counteracting what was going on in, in the Jewish world and the Roman world of that time. Um, but nevertheless, there was the tiniest seed there of, of a denigration of women, of feeling that men are superior to woman, women, which has resulted in, in many Christian churches in, the, in neglecting the divine feminine completely and, and playing up the, the divine masculine to the point where uh, the energy signature of um, patriarchal domination is, is very prevalent in the world today and has led to many social injustices, you see. So this is just another example. I, and in each case, I'm overlooking all the wonderful good done by, by many groups, but I'm just explaining how group karma can become kind of overwhelming, especially for certain people in the groups uh, who have certain t t soul tendencies that, that agree with tiny samskaric differences, samskaric seeds, in the original founders of the groups, okay? So, the takeaway, in my opinion, is that we must always be extremely aware of the karmic play and that we need to take the power of creation into our own hands and become and create that which we wish to become and create. We have that power, and by expressing that power in our own hologram, we create a fractal that can be duplicated by many different people, okay, if they wish to, if they're aware of it, if they exercise their free will. <laughs> you all take care. Such a long-winded discourse. And uh, just to let you know, with the exception of Christianity, which I hold in very high esteem and which I follow faithfully, these other things that I've talked about are purely fictional things, okay? And you can look at my blog under Christianity to see all the wonderful things that I have to say about that faith. Love you all. Bye-bye.